in what was a performance he'd love to forget. They're a team that runs the ball very well. Here's Jamal Haynes, the converted wide receiver in his first year as a running back. The only quarterback in the country to pass for at least 250 in every game. Dejon Edwards. The ball comes out, and right now, no whistle. Cannon Johnson has it for Georgia Tech. One thing the Jackets can do on defense is take the ball away. Very optimistic group, as you can see, Edwards trying to drive forward. Eford, Kyle Eford, the player of the game last week for the Jackets, gets her hand on it. Looks as if that ball is dislodged. And they're throwing a wide open receiver. Brett Sither, the former Georgia Bulldog, still fighting for every inch against his former team. And they're going to rule them stopped at the nine yard line. Dominic Blaylock, a couple of Georgia transfers, are fired up to play their old team tonight. And a great design by Buster Faulkner. Sither has great speed. He's the more athletic of the linebackers. He wraps around and gets on the seam. It's a perfectly placed ball off the RPO, and it leads to a big play. Just the seventh catch of the year for Scyther, Georgia, including the Mackey Award winner Brock Bowers. Jamal Haynes on first and goal from the nine after the 28-yard pass play taken down by Warren Brinson a couple of years ago. That's in the last 20 seasons. They think the reverse. Haynes can the touchdown. You know, the Georgia coach has said we can't let Haynes King beat us with his legs. Rushing touchdown of the season for King. And Malik Rutherford on the jet sweep gets the fake. And then Scaglione, the right guard, he pulls around on the quarterback power. King cuts back for another big play. The quarterback run game in the red zone is one of the things that Kirby Smart and Glenn Schumann, the defensive coordinator, are most concerned about. And the open field speed of Haynes King on display there for the first score of the game. As you look around the stands, and that's not unusual when they come here to Atlanta, about 70 miles from Athens. Dominic Lovett runs out of bounds with a 12-yard gain and a first down. Kendall Milton through this leaky Georgia Tech run defense, which gives up 222 yards per game on the ground. Only Louisiana Tech. Beck over the middle. And seven more on the completion to love it. Transfer from Missouri. So productive at Missouri at 82 catches the last two years for the Tigers. Another quality run. This one from Kendall Milton. 11 yards and another first down. Milton slipped a bit as he cut. And still got inside the 35. Stopped by Taquan Douse, who was officially credited with the forced fumble. They'd be able to run the ball effectively tonight. Beck on target, as is so often the case, to Dylan Bell. Another member, Greg, of that wide receiver core who's come on lately. So versatile, too. Third down and one. They line up quickly. They use the size of Beck for the first down. He got hit behind the line of scrimmage. Now he's playing at a crazy high level, just 12 starts into his career. And he said if he had to play in recent years, they were not afraid. As a ricochet and an interception. Off the ricochet, it's LaMiles Brooks with the second takeaway in the opening half of this first quarter. Low throw, and it skipped off. Love it. Into the hands of Brooks. Here comes a Jackets blitz, well picked up by Edwards. A man is open, it's Lovett with the touchdown. They blitzed and did not get there, and Lovett has the score, his third of the season. Excellent protection by Edwards. Eford's coming at 100 miles an hour. 
completely stoned, which allows Carson Beck a clean pocket to throw the slot fade to love it, a route that he made so many plays on at Missouri, and they just haven't had the opportunities to hit those. Yeah, it was back and forth, and a really bold call at the end by Kayla DeBoer to get in the win. On first down for Georgia Tech, Dante Smith, the fifth-year senior. He got seven candidates and the two quarterbacks there, Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. Fake to Smith, the little dump off to Luke Benson. <laughs> now the pistol. Haynes King faked the handoff and has another man open at Singleton again out of bounds in Georgia territory. 15 yard gain. Very comparable based on the experience he had at Georgia. On second and ten. King flushed, sets. Singleton, a nice catch. And a first down for Georgia Tech. And great movement in the pocket by Haynes King. Munden unblocked. He's rushing. Haynes King escapes to his left but keeps his eyes downfield. 98% of the team voted him as a team captain. It's pretty remarkable in your first year. And they fake the jet sweep action. He shows that talent. He's 6'3", 204, and he can move. He got a first down. A lot of people think has a great chance to win the Heisman Trophy. Into the traffic and down three yards short of the first down. And you get the crowd into it. Even a lot of early momentum here. Got to score touchdowns to beat the Bulldogs. Georgia team fifth in the country in scoring offense. Uh, better than 40 points per game. Janelius Tatum dropped Dejon Edwards for a loss of one. It's not likely to be successful against the two-time defending national champs. It's working so far, though. Back, there's a busted coverage on third down and 11. Dejon Edwards, a long run across midfield. They're actually going to spot him right out of the 50-yard line. Strange to have a bust in coverage coming out of a timeout, too, between the quarters. They completely bust. There's nobody in Mantry this year on third down. 56.9% coming in. And two for two tonight, and now through a big hole, Kendall Milton. To the 31-yard line of the Jackets defensive back. And just a great run here by Milton. He sees the left side. Micah Morris, the left guard, get his man in. The left end of the line. You'll see the bulk of the action at tight end tonight without Brock Bowers. Milton again, spinning ahead inside the 25. Coached the outside linebackers when Kirby first got to Athens. It was a holdover from Mark Rickstaff. Here's Dylan Bell, dragged down by Clayton Powell Lee, who saved the touchdown at the three-yard line. 22 yards for Georgia. Watch the right tackle, number 65. He's engaged with Jalen King and just sends him for a ride. The Bulldogs trying to take their first lead of the night. Kendall Milton, touchdown. The right side of the offensive line just completely buries the Georgia Tech defensive line. If you look at just how much movement they're getting. In overtime, did Georgia Tech. 11 straight losses to Georgia here since then. Six-yard gain. It's been tough sledding. Yeah, King's been their best bet keeping the ball. It's a play fake. Looked like he won to launch a long pass on fourth and one instead of Singleton. On the comeback at the 41, and they convert. Dante Smith trying to turn the corner. He keeps the legs driving and got up to the 48-yard line. Walt Howard, they're so good in the middle. Smith. Tough run to the Georgia 40. 12 more. And an excellent job here. By the center and the left guard, that's Fusel and Weston Franklin, who get good movement and displace that defensive tackle. You mentioned how much Brent Key talked about toughness in our meeting. Here's some trickery, and it's King who winds up keeping it. Nifty play, drawn by Buster Faulkner. Dante Smith as a Wildcat quarterback. 
He handed it off. <laughs> then King uh, faked it, and I think that was a design run all the way, don't you? Let's see if the injury slows down the Jackets' momentum. Dante Smith. Boy, he's a tough runner, just 5'11", 198 pounds. They average almost 200 yards per game rushing. They're in the top 20 in the country. Jamal Haynes up the middle. Two yards short of the first down. It'll be third and two. He's 12 out of 13 this season. As a freshman, and that's a knuckle ball that goes through. It held the ball for more than six and a half minutes on each of those two drives that resulted in three points. Makai Muse with another kickoff right along the sideline. He went charging right up the boundary. A nice return out to the 36-yard line. Here's Kevin Nagandi. I don't think they're going to take a one-loss Florida State team without Jordan Travis. No, not, not under their own accord. Carson Beck wanted to fling it deep. He pulled it down. Now he takes off. And he ran out of bounds. He'll certainly be in the college football playoff if the Wolverines can take care of business in the Big Ten title game against Iowa. Kendall Milton for a first down. Kyle Eford made the tackle, seven yards on the play. Running back with Dejon Edwards. Here comes a Georgia Tech blitz. Milton got away and was tripped up just shy of the 45-yard line. This was impressive. Milton again. West Warwick, Rhode Island out of Bishop Hendrickson High School. He's 6'7", 320. A blitz. They locked it over the head of the blitzer. And Edwards out of bounds. Kyle Eford there again. He's really been much more sore this past week than he had been after those previous couple of games. Here's Edwards running for the first down on third and nine. Bauer stand in Oscar Delp. Oscar Delp's really a guy that is not a great blocker at this stage of his career. A blitz from deep doesn't impact Beck at all. And there is Delp. More of a receiver than he is a blocker. That's his 20th catch of the year. Lacrosse. First and goal after the 16-yard play. And to me, Greg, I, if I were Brent Key, I would be thinking about timeouts here. Edwards remains the running back on the right hip of Beck. And Edwards lunges for the goal line. Touchdown! Just a great run there by Edwards. It looked initially like he was going to be stopped by Clayton Powell Lee at the progressive pylon cam shows that highlights plus reaction coming your way, Sean. Back to you. All right, Kevin. It has been a wild day of college football. And first down, Jamal Haynes stopped after a five-yard gain. He'd go try to steal some points. Haynes. Out of bounds. And there is a flag. Looked like it might be a face mask on Malachi Starks. Haynes King is six out of seven passing. He's their leading rusher. Here's Jamal Haynes. First down to the 32-yard line. An 11-yard gain, and now they'll use their first timeout. Given time, and a one-handed grab by Malik Rutherford, and then he couldn't hang on. Did he? Yes, he did. On third and three, that's going to be very close. C.J. Allen, the true freshman, made the tackle. They've had the last couple of years, hasn't dropped off at all. Play fake by King. He can't take a sack. He does. They'll have to use the timeout. Miller dropped him. Back at the 32. And Miller engaged with the right tackle, Jordan Williams. And he pushes Jordan Williams off its side, and Haynes King runs right into the pressure. You just can't do that. In the first half, nearly seven yards per carry. The Yellow Jackets got to find an answer against the one-two punch. And it's Makai Muse taking the opening kickoff. 
And another good return. He had a 34-yard kickoff return in the first half. It's really been a great first half for the offensive line of the Bulldogs. Playing without Tate Ratledge. They're starting right guard. Edwards dropped for a loss by Paul Moala. Of course, they had the miracle of miracles in their win at Miami. And all Miami had to do was take a knee and win the game. They ran a play and fumbled, and Georgia Tech went the length of the field in the final minute. Dante Smith upended, but gets the first down. Javon Bullard, the outstanding safety. Dante Smith. Has another first down with an 11 yard gain. After a wild start, the game has settled in a little bit. Here's Milton with lots of blockers out in front. And that'll get him over 100. Or he's finally in progress at his own 43. And a great job by Ernest Green and Oscar Delp out there. They pull around, a little pin and pull technique. Milton gets up field. Quiet night for Beck. They've not asked him to throw it much. Eight out of 13, Milton again. And why would you throw it when he can get you nine and a half per carry? And then Johnson made the tackle. Well, and the defensive coordinator, Kevin Scherr, is clearly recognizing that they got to get more aggressive because they've been gashed over and over again. That time he calls internal blitz. Blitzing by five, the previous career high he put up two weeks ago. They were ready for him that time. Stopped and driven back. By the middle of that defense, Daquan Douse. Safe point advantage for Georgia, the largest for either side. Back over the middle, caught. Dominic Lovett, first down inside the 30 with Jalen King. Four catches for 60 yards for Lovett. Marion Smith, a rare touch. He can move. He's been a sprinter on the track team. They'd like to get him the ball more often. He's semifinals for the Broyles Award to the top assistant coach in the country. Well deserved. Dejan Edwards. Bobo's already had a good weekend. His son Jake. Second and 11. And drop for a loss. Edwards by Micaiah Scott. The transfer from South Carolina. Carson Beck is the holder. You don't see that very often, the starting quarterback as the holder around college football. The alumni and getting more popular with the success that they're having in his first full year. Here's Dylan Bell with a lot of blockers and not many white shirts. Gets away from an attempted tackle around the head and gets down to the 26-yard line. Georgia Tech's really been selling out up the middle. So this time Mike Bobo tries to go with a little fake up the middle, handed on the end around, and Dylan Bell, a guy that's played running back and wide receiver. Under two minutes to go, third quarter. That one caught and fighting for the first down is Bell. Great effort. Once under Bear Bryant, once under Gene Stallings. Swing pass to Dominic Lovett inside the five. And near another first down at the three. With the lead. Now they run quickly over the ball, trying to catch the Jackets off guard, and perhaps they did. As Milton, with very little resistance, as he scores a touchdown. You see the muddle huddle messed with Georgia Tech's alignment. At the last minute, it looked like Moala would come to the outside and kind of play the defensive end spot, working against Ernest Green. And if you have a middle linebacker working against the left tackle, in full run support, that's bad ball. What a 27-24. You saw Kirby Smart celebrating the victory with Bobo. They were teammates back there in 1997. Brent Key was an offensive lineman on that Georgia Tech team. Jackets have had only two field goals since. Have not scored since the second quarter. Here's Singleton. Eric Singleton! Malachi Starks trying to run him down. Just shy of the 10-yard line. Just a great job on the outside, too, by Dylan Leonard and Luke Benson. The two tight ends, they go out. And it gave you two. Of the... Score.
scored that as a pass play for 57. And that run dropped by Tyke Smith. Their leading tackler for the year, he dropped Dante Smith. Two out of ten on third down. Here comes some late pressure. King lost the ball. Marvin Jones Jr. got there. And the Jackets got it back. And it was a great green dog pressure by the freshman Raylan Wilson. He recognizes that the offensive line had all engaged. He decides to go. He attacks King, forces him out of the pocket. And then as he escapes, there's really nowhere else to go. This one a 40-yard attempt. Yeah. 21 road wins in a row back in the early and mid-70s. They've won 38 straight regular season games. A short kickoff goes to Dylan Bell. And Kyle Eifert stopped him, but not until he crossed midfield and then some. When you're on the road in a rivalry game, team that you're playing just scores, flip momentum back by creating a big return and good field position for your offense. And the three kickoff, Georgia and Oregon, the only two teams in the country in the top ten in both scoring offense and scoring defense. Beck throws on the run, caught. Arian Smith. Nice night for him, perhaps build his confidence and get him a little more involved. 11 minutes to go. Edwards, nice cut back to his left. First down. A really good job cutting back here, too, by Edwards. Inside split zone. Delt does a good job at the end man on the line of scrimmage. So they're back to second down and 20. Blitz off the corner. Back. Pressure takes off running Carson Beck Looking like his idol when he grew up in Jacksonville Tim Tebow To the University of Florida baseball program Given all kinds of time into the end zone and it is Intercepted KJ Wallace came away with it stop them and now the turnover. First interception thrown by Beck tonight. The second Georgia turnover. In his first of the season, second year here as a transfer from Notre Dame. Malik Rutherford bounces off a tackle and gets enough extra yardage for a first down. Now they want a flag. Looks like at that point it was. A little bit of a grab there by Marvin Jones. We kind of call the foul there. This tackle by Allen allowed the first down. Here's Malik Rutherford. Well, they can go down and score a touchdown here. I mean, Alabama that close to being out of the college football playoff picture. Here's Jamal Haynes. The GT counter, both the guard and the tackle pull around. Haynes sets up the blocker and bursts to the outside. Lesser time slopping, stopping him. Dante Smith got enough before he was driven back. First down, Georgia Tech. And how lucky are we? It was near the goal line. Haynes King, another touchdown! <laughs> And try to make it an eight-point game. Just a great job. They fake a little speed option pitch to the outside. They have counteraction inside Fusel and Scyther get great blocks on the edge, and King walks into the end zone for the second time. Winner of that one would have a great shot to be in the college football playoff. Here's Kendall Milton. What a night for Milton. Dragging jackets with him. Improving on his career high, and that should just about do it. So that's it. Valiant effort by the Yellow Jackets comes up short. And Georgia has won 29 straight games, now all alone with the longest winning streak in Southeastern Conference history.